anticipation of getting my Edge 8, which has been on back order uh, since the beginning of March, it's now almost August. Uh, I did get a off-axis guider. I'm going to set this up on my uh, Orion scope here, so I figure I'd go through, because the instructions in these are pretty horrible. Uh, all the ZWO stuff, I think their instructions leave a lot to be desired. So I figured I'd set this up. Um, lighting's not too good here. I'll set this up uh, and film it. Now, it's pretty cut and dry. I mean, I'll have to figure out how to attach this to the scope. Let me see if I, I gotta go outside, I guess. Let me go outside so we can get some more light. It's a little dark in the observatory. It's a good day to do this because it's a cloudy day anyway. <laughs> Can't do the focus, but. Okay. I don't know if that's better or not. Lighting's just terrible out here today. But uh, basically, this is what you get. There's a couple of adapters that come with it. Uh, this screw up here, if you loosen that sh top screw, let me set this down again, that screw, and turn that Allen wrench, or Allen nut, that allows this part to slide up and down to focus the camera when you get it in place. The screw here, and this Allen wrench, allow you to position the uh, off-axis mirror which is right there it allows that to slide up and down in here so it's not blocking your sensor I'm gonna take my camera off my mount and hook the camera up to this to hopefully give you a better view so I will be back in a second Okay, so this is um, my whole attachment that goes to the back of my scope. So I opened the shutter of the observatory, so maybe it's a little brighter in here. But that slides in, that gives me a little attachment area. You got the 294mm, my EAF, and some spacers. Now I'm thinking, of course, this is going to screw up my focus, but uh, that's to be expected. So, I'm going to, maybe if I take this spacer out, that almost looks perfect. If I take that spacer out, I might just cover the difference and it might not change my focus too much. So, that's my next step. I'll do that. Got to figure out. I imagine it's better for certain to put this in front of the EAF and the in the train this is the and that goes into the scope so I, I'm sure it would be better to put it in front of the filters so I'm going to try and see about mounting it um, right here I'll have to put the camera out <laughs> it's hard to hold the phone and do this camera out this way otherwise it'll probably hit that so I'll do some experimenting here and I'll show you my end results, but I'm pretty sure if I unscrew this and put this in its place, that'll work pretty well. We're going to give that a shot. Okay, after a brief pause there, I did find out that the 16.5 spacer is almost exactly the same size as that. So I took that out of the, the image train. And this screwed right in in its place. So that was a good fit. Now the problem I have is I'm going to have to loosen the top. Uh, basically I'm going to have to slide the mirror out. Because to screw this on, it's going to hit. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do this. Um... I can, I can, when I'm finished, I can spin this so this is there. 
and then it won't matter. But at this point, I can't tighten it because I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me get a better angle here. But the camera holder hits the EA, the uh, filter wheel. So I'll pause it again. <laughs> I'm going to take this off and go from there. Okay, I apologize. There's going to be lots of stops and goes in this video. But as you can see, I took... All I did was loosen that set screw and that Allen screw. And I'm trying to be careful because it's got a mirror on here. A tiny one. And this just slid right out. So now... Theoretically, I should be able to take this, line up the screws, which is always tough to do. There it goes. Nope, I thought I had it. There, I got it. Okay. So we're going to tighten this and pray that it tightens with the uh, other camera up getting close oh that's not good so I'm gonna have to spin something because you can see this this ended up down into the filter wheel so I'm gonna have to try and spin or loosen something so this is gonna be another pause see if I can figure out how to get another two-thirds of a turn out of that somehow so I will be back in a second again. Okay. So I come to the conclusion that that probably wasn't going to work. So I will end up having to change my focus position. I put the spacer back in and the kit comes with this Increaser. I can't remember the name of it, but I had to put that on the spacer, and then I'm hoping I gotta do this without dropping stuff. Up this screws, and it does not. So that didn't help much. Wait a minute. There we got it. There we got it. Sorry. Now let's we'll screw this in with that spacer. And the, of course, it still wants to end up on the same side <laughs> as my focus or my filter wheel. Um, but now I'm hoping that I can slide this in here and still have room. Then I put the uh, mirror part back in. That'll go the mirror away from the... This is hard to do with one hand. The mirror away. It looks like it'll work. Because I'm going to use my... Um, 120 Mini. And I can put that on there without any problems. So, first thing I'm going to do... I'm going to look down the train here now. You can't really see because of the focus wheel. The focus... Uh, wheel where the you can see my phone camera but uh, you want to make sure the mirror is out of the view you don't want that I think that's good I think we'll still pick up stars from the telescope like that and it's not interfering I may have to play with that a little bit but I think that's good. So I'm, for now, I'm going to tighten this back. And that holds that in place this way. And then I think I'm good. So I hope you could follow that. Hopefully the trial and error method that you have to use to get some of these things in the image train is just uh, kind of amazing. But uh, you know how it is. got all these spacers and thread increasers, thread reducers. Um, I'm hoping, you know, I could do one more thing here. I'll put this down here. 
take one more thing off my scope here and give me a better idea of this hasn't been off in ages so I don't know how, if I can do this with one hand I may have to put the phone down yeah I'm gonna have to put the phone down so I will show you what I'm gonna do here in a second I'm gonna pause it okay I'm back um, this is the only other thing it attaches everything to my scope so I just wanted to put this on um, and I'm gonna have to do a couple things here I'm just gonna set that to there for now tighten that gently and then this goes you know, three prongs to the three screws See the, I don't know if you can see the prongs. Again, I apologize, the lighting is just terrible. I really need like four hands. But those go to those screws. You tighten those. So that other thing really didn't change my imaging field of view. I just wanted to make sure because double check here now yeah actually it did so now if you look down here see if I can focus you can see a little bit of the camera or the lens but you really can't see that much of it so I'm gonna have to move it down a little further so I'm gonna loosen I'm looking at that little mirror that little light and oh boy here comes some Sun maybe I can show it to you this way not really. <laughs> the lighting for this is just terrible. But anyway, if you can see down inside there, I'm going to move this up to the end of my adapters. And you can see I, I might be okay, but I'm going to move it down just a little bit. And I'm going to do that by loosening this screw right here. And then sliding the whole mirror and sliding the whole mirror down a little bit. And you see how that slides up and down. Like I said, you want that in the field in your telescope's field of view, but not in the field of view of the uh, CMOS chip. And I may have to experiment with that a little bit, but I think that's pretty good. If I look in here, yeah, I think we're good now. Without looking through the camera, it's a lot more clear. Let me see if I can brighten this up. Helped a little bit, not really. It just burns everything out. <laughs> but um, I hope you get the idea. Basically, you want that mirror, like I said, um not blocking your CMOS trip, but also able to see through the telescope so you can get the stars on it. And I think I got it pretty good there. So I'm gonna pause this for a second. Okay, I'm back. So now that I got that where I want it, here's my, I'm gonna experiment with this. This is the, the 120 mini. I don't know if the field of view is gonna to be too small or if it's gonna work. It'll probably work with my Orion uh, it's the field of view is pretty big. I don't know if it'll work with uh, the Edge 8. That's going to be a whole new experience. So I'm just going to slide that in. And I'm going to tighten that gently. Now it's snug. So there you can see the whole off-axis all, all guider installed with the mini attached um, I hope this was helpful I kind of had to experiment I figure everybody has to experiment everybody's setup is going to be a little bit different but maybe if I videoed my stumbling blocks which is basically the uh, spacer so I'm going to have to back my focus up um, about an inch, not a big deal, but 
I have an EAF and it's all set up, so that's kind of annoying, but it only take me a minute now that I know how to work that. <laughs> and then the last step I got to do is after I refocus the scope to good focus, then I have to focus the auto guide or, or the uh, auto guide scope. And I, again, you do that by loosening the upper screw there and sliding and, and that Allen screw and sliding this until it gets into focus. And you can also back the, the camera out too if you need additional, at least with mine. Um, so I hope that was helpful. I apologize for the lighting. Um, a flock of geese flying overhead. Uh, but uh, it's a cloudy day. It's a good day to do this. Unfortunately, as you can see, I can't focus anything today because of all the clouds out there. But um, at least I can get this hooked up and ready to go. And hopefully that was somewhat helpful. If it was, please like my channel, subscribe, uh, leave any comments. I appreciate all the comments I get. It's always fun to see um, other people say how helpful or unhelpful my videos are. <laughs> I get both, but that's okay. So, you have a good day, and hopefully you get clear skies. Uh, I'll probably be doing something Saturday night. It's now Wednesday. It's going to be cloudy like this until Saturday. And this is Pennsylvania, so I'm sure it'll be cloudy by Saturday too. But that's just the way Pennsylvania weather is. All right, have a good day.